There's a holdup in the Bronx. Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child. Cruise ships do an idle wild. Car 54, where are you? Tonight's program brought to you by Cam A. Secret of Soft Skin. And by Lava, the soap that gets hands clean right down to the fingernails. Scene four, take one. All right, stand by. Now, you take it just before police inspector Harrison's entrance. Action. Why'd he do it? Why? Why? Who's there? Caught! Oh, now what happened? Where's the actor who's playing the inspector? I can't find him. Uh, I guess he didn't come in this morning. Well, get me another actor. Any other actor. Right, Chief. <laughs> Hello? What? Yeah, I'm free. We got a part for you, Blakely, but you got to get right down here. We're shooting that television series, Nightstick. We'll rush a script right over to you so you can study in the cab down here. But first, stop at Acme Costume and get fitted for a police inspector's uniform. We're here on location at the 31st Precinct. That's at 53rd in Lexington. Have you got that? Yeah, I got it. Stop at Acme Costume and go to 53rd Precinct. <laughs> locker room is a disgrace. Look at the mess your locker is in, Tootie. Now, what if an inspector from headquarters should drop in? Oh, an inspector. You know they never drop in around Christmas time. Oh, no, they don't, huh? Would you, Gunther Tootie, sign an affidavit to the effect that inspectors don't drop in at Christmas time? Captain Block! What is it? An inspector just walked in. An inspector? Are you sure? Well, he had on the uniform of an inspector, he wore a badge of an inspector, so I jumped to the conclusion that he wasn't Santa Claus. An inspector, clean this mess up! Inspector? I'm Captain Block. Is there anything I can do for you? I don't know. I was told they were shooting here in the police station. Oh, shooting in here? Hey, quiet. Have you been keeping something from me? Believe me, if there had been a shooting in here, I would have been told. Captain, I meant shooting a picture. A picture, Inspector? I'm not really an inspector. I'm an actor. An actor? I was sent the script and I was told they were shooting a TV series here. Here? Well, there must be some mistake. Is there a phone I can use? Right in my office. Francis, would you help me? Gunther, will you let go of the money? Oh. <laughs> would you butt me up? I can't butt with one hand. Gunther, I'm not going to go through another day with you holding on to that money. I have to butter your bread. I have to do all the driving. But Francis, it's the orphan's money. Those little eyes. Gunther, why don't you do what we always do when we have brotherhood funds? Leave the money with the captain. Say, that's a good idea, if you can't trust your own captain. <laughs> okay, I'll wait here. Right. It was the 31st precinct. They're going to send a police car for me. You mind if I wait here? Oh, not at all. Oh. Thanks. So, you're an actor? Yeah. I did a bit of acting myself. <laughs> really? Oh, nothing professional, of course, but I did have the lead in my high school play, The Vagabond King. I played the part of Francois Vion, the poet. Yes, I, I had my hair then. If I were king... Excuse me, Captain, I'm trying to learn the part. I'm sorry. Say, Captain, if you have a few minutes, would you mind cueing me? Cue you? You know, read the other part. Oh, cue you, yes, I'd love to. Oh, wonderful. Take it right from here. Right here, you play the part of Patrolman Donovan. Yes, sir, I have it. Okay. It's a big scene, I want to see if I know it. All right. Go ahead. Inspector Harrison, Bob, did they have to call you in on this? I'm not here as an inspector. I'm here as a friend. Why did you do it? Why, why? How do I know why? Boy, will I be glad when this is safe for the captain's hands. Stop torturing me. Stop torturing me. <laughs> I tell you, I don't know why I did it. 
It's a feeling that comes over me and you don't understand. I understand only one thing. My oldest friend in the police force, the best man at my wedding, a cop with a perfect record for 20 years, turns out to be a, a kleptomaniac. I can't help it. I can't help it. You've got to help it. You can't go on stealing things from department store counters. Look at this last thing you took, a lousy pen and pencil set from a cigar store. Going through your fellow officer's lockers. Give me one more chance. I'll fight against it. All right. One more chance. Well, there's the patrol car for me. I gotta rush. See you, Captain. Goodbye, Captain. Goodbye. Do you boys want to see me about something? Yes, there's something that you could... I could what? Nothing, nothing. Muldoon, you're his official interpreter. What does he mean? Well, actually, Captain... My phone. Gunther, what we just heard in that room has to remain strictly between us. If it ever got out that a great guy like the Captain... My lips are sealed. Good. Our Captain, a kleptomaniac. <laughs> Sit. Why does your sister always have to get sick around Christmas? There's nothing I can do, Paul. I have to go to Jersey City and take care of the kids until she's better. So you just have to shop for your sergeant's gifts yourself. But, dear, I'll have to sneak them in here. I don't want them to know I'm giving them Christmas presents. Then they'll feel they have to give me a present, and I won't have that. I'm sorry, Paul. It'll only take a few minutes. There's a department store just around the corner. I'll try to be back before Christmas Eve. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Christmas shopping. <laughs> The captain's in trouble. We gotta help him. Well, you know how I feel about Captain Block. I'd give him the shirt off my back. Better yet, I'd even let him steal the shirt off my back. <laughs> Will you stop saying that? <laughs> Maybe we're wrong. In the ten years we've been here, have you ever heard of anything stolen out of the station? No. But it only shows what a real clever thief the captain is. <laughs> what do you mean? Don't you get it? What's the cleverest thing a real clever thief can do? What? Not steal anything. <laughs> Not steal anything? Yeah. A dumb thief, he steals something, what happens? He gets arrested and goes to jail. But a real clever thief sometimes never steals anything in his whole life. And he goes scot-free. <laughs> I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear that. It makes sense. The captain is such a clever thief that... Good Gunther, will you stop saying that? Gunther, we ought to be ashamed of ourselves. We've lost faith in the captain. What do you mean? A man walks around snitching things off counters. Will you be quiet? <laughs> Gunther, do you know of any man that has such a strong character as the captain? No. He's like a rock. That's right. And he promised that friend of his, the inspector, that he'd never steal anything again. That's good enough for me. Me too. Come on, we're on duty. I, I, I sure feel better about the whole thing now. Me too. That should teach us a lesson. You gotta have faith in people. Oh, oh. What is it? I'm gonna show you how much faith I got in the captain. I'm gonna let him hold this money. That's a good idea. <laughs> oh, no, he did it again. He was only gone ten minutes. What a haul. He probably kept putting it off and putting it off that he had to do all his Christmas stealing at the last minute. <laughs> we gotta protect him. How? There's only one way. We gotta take all that stuff he stole and return it to the stores before they miss it. Come on. Yes, sir? Do we have any Christmas wrapping paper left over from last year? Good. 
No, no, don't bring it in. I'll get it myself. I just came off duty. Did you notice anybody strange around my door? No, Captain. Why? Come in. Close the door. What is it, Captain? Leo? Yes, Captain? I don't know how to say this. <laughs> what is it, Captain? Leo, I've been robbed. You've been robbed? That's ridiculous. I know. If I'd been robbed at my home, that would have been one thing. But it's very upsetting to be robbed in my own police station. Especially when there's a big sign on my door that very clearly says, Captain. I can't understand it. Maybe they didn't see the sign. What did they pay? I'll make out a report. You'll make out no report. That's all the newspapers need. Police captain's office robbed. I'll be the laughing stock of the entire company. You're right. Good it won't look. Leo, I hate to say it, but it's got to be one of our men. I can't believe it. It has to be. And if he took those gifts, they must still be here in the station. That sounds logical. Leo, I want you to search every locker, every desk, every hiding place in this building. Find the thief who stole from the captain. I'll track him down like a dog. Boy, who ever figured there'd be so many people in that department store? We should have just dumped the packages in front of the store and ran. Look. We can just keep him here until after Christmas and then say we found him in an alley or something. Good. We'll put him in a closet. I never heard of such a thing. You guys ought to get your noses punched for suggesting anything like that. Warning us to start locking our lockers. Are you suggesting we got a thief in our precinct? We didn't say there was a thief in the precinct. All we said was, if there was a sneak thief around, why keep the lockers open and tempt him? We're just warning you guys. That's all. The day I can't trust every one of my fellow cops, I'll leave the force. You guys ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Come on, Gutter. Hi, Leo. Hi. Hi, boys. I just came up for a smoke. <laughs> I tell you that Muldoon's getting a stupid this tootie. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, not Schnauzer. My own partner, not Leo. All we tried to do was warn him. Wait, you know something, Gunther? I'll bet all the captain's troubles are over. You mean he won't steal anymore? That's right. I'll bet the shock of finding all that stuff that he stole, gone, has brought him around to his senses. I once read in a book somewhere I think we shocked them into another load. Who is it? What is it, Nicholson? I have to talk to you, Captain. May I come in? No, 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 I'll come out. What is it? Go ahead. Captain, I... Captain, this has to be in the strictest confidence. Over there. <laughs> what is it? Captain, I fought myself all day whether to tell you this, but I'm only telling you for his own good. Whose own good? Captain, one of your patrolmen is a thief. You found him? Who is he? 
Captain, I'd rather cut my throat than have to say this. Who is he? My own partner, Leo Schnauzer. <laughs> Schnauzer? We saw him go through the lockers, Kissel caught him going through the desks. Forget about it. But, Captain! Nicholson, I'm busy. Busy, but, Captain, he's one of your own men. My partner, good old reliable Schnauzer. You know, Leo, he's naturally nosy. <laughs> but, Captain, you just can't stand by and let this happen to a nice guy like Schnauzer. You've got to talk to him. All right, I'll talk to him, but you're wasting your time. This is a police station. People don't steal things out of police stations. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got things to do. <laughs> Nothing at all. Yes, sir. You'll talk to Leo? I'll talk to him. Nicholson said you wanted to see me about something, Captain. See you about something? What was it? Oh, yes. I've been robbed again. Not again? Yes, again. Oh, I really don't mind being robbed. In fact, I'm kind of getting used to it. I'm beginning to accept being robbed as a way of life. <laughs> Leo, you gotta help me! Oh, Captain, it could happen to anybody. But it doesn't happen to police captains. People don't come into a police station and rob the captain of that station. Maybe that's it. Maybe I don't look like a captain. Oh, you look like a captain, all right. Leo, do we have any brand new men around here who don't know I'm the captain? No, everybody knows you're the captain. Good. Leo, you've got to do me a favor. What do you want me to do? Go out, find out who's robbing me, ask him to stop, put it in a nice way. Tell him it's driving me out of my mind. Tell him it's undermining the entire confidence of the New York Police Department. And Leo, tell him, robbing a police captain, it doesn't look nice. <laughs> Hi, Ed. Say, fellas. What's the matter, Ed? Do you know if Leo Schnauzer had an unhappy childhood? He must have had. Imagine that face on a kid. Oh, stop with the cracks, will you? <laughs> Sorry, Ed. Lay off of me. He's in enough trouble. Trouble? What do you mean? You guys are his closest friends. You might as well know. Leo's a kleptomaniac. <laughs> another one? What do you mean, another one? Ed. This is a terrible thing to say, but the captain's one, too. The captain? Yeah. No wonder Leo and the captain are always together lately. Yeah. They teamed up for the holiday stealing. Quiet, Ed. We've got to do something for him. That's why I got this book. You mean that book tells you how to cure kleptomania? Well, it tells you the cause of it. And once you know the cause of it, like right here, in many cases, kleptomania can be traced to a bleak childhood. In many cases, a person who has a child was deprived of toys unconsciously starts to steal in order to compensate for the toys he never had. Come on. Coast is clear. They struck again. You stand guard here at the door. Shoot anybody who tries to get in. Hello. Oh, no. That furniture's got to be delivered to my house by tonight. It's the Christmas present to my wife. She's coming home tonight, Christmas Eve. And when I open the door, that's going to be the big surprise. You're sure, huh? Well, look, until what time are you open? Well, I'll get back to you. Oh, it's you, Captain. Leo, I've got to get the new furniture delivered to my house by tonight. The store can't deliver it. I'll borrow my brother-in-law's truck. Come on. He owes me a favor. I begged him not to marry my sister. Leo, he's got to lend us that truck. It's the only chance we have of getting that furniture over to my house. Don't worry about Murray. He's a real brother-in-law. Hello, Murray. This is Leo. Leo Schnauzer, your brother-in-law. 
Are you finished making deliveries? Good. Can I borrow the truck? You don't mind if the furniture smells a little from fish. <laughs> anything, anything, just get it. There has to be an answer. They have to be here somewhere. somebody to help us move the furniture. Take it easy. It's all set. Look, I've got the truck. All we've got to do is go down to the back of the warehouse, pick up the furniture, and we'll have it over at your house without anybody seeing us. Well, that does it, Captain. Your wife's gonna flip when she sees all this. I've been promising her this for years. Thanks, Leo. Don't mention it. I've got to pick her up at the bus station. I can't understand it. I've only been gone for three days, and you look as though you've been through something terrible. I have been, dear. But when I open this door and see the look on your face, it'll all be worth it. Christmas, dear. <laughs> Gee, thanks, fellas, for helping us out. Yeah, we're getting the furniture back to the warehouse the minute it opens in the morning. Let's go. Ooh, ooh. You know what's on? My favorite television program, Nightstick. <laughs> I tell you, I don't know why I did it. It's a feeling that comes over me and... Oh, you wouldn't understand. I understand only one thing. <laughs> my oldest friend of the police force. The best man at my wedding. A cop with a perfect record for 20 years turns out to be a... a kleptomaniac. <laughs> the inspector. He was just an actor. Come on, let's go get the boys. You must be getting cold. You've been out there for half an hour. Deck the halls with clouds of holly. La 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 la. Tis the season to La 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 la. we now our gay apparel. La 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 la. Tell the ancient you by Darrow. La 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 la. La 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 Sing we joy us all together Tra la 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 In and out of wind and weather Tra la 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 
Tonight's program brought to you by New Push Button Lilt, the only home permanent that waves your hair with foam. And by Gleam Toothpaste.